Bonjour. Bonjour. Hello, everyone. How are you? How are you, Marie? <laughs> I'm good. I mean, it's sunny. We are in Paris, and uh, even during the lockdown, we can have a little bit of fun. So that's what we're going to do today. It is almost summertime. It's been a week of summertime. Yeah, we had beautiful uh, weather and nice temperature. So yeah, let's uh, let's hope summer is coming or Beauti spring at least. <laughs> a beautiful way to celebrate the spring and this weird. Uh, kind of lockdown phase which is not literally a lockdown we're allowed to be outside uh, and go around 10 we, kilometers from our home yes without uh, paper I mean before we needed a justification to do so and now it's not the case so yeah, we're almost free to free. go free, yeah free to go <laughs> we have a prison cell of 10 kilometers which is not too bad it's not too bad so so yeah so today we're gonna enjoy being outside and uh, we can uh, show you guys just something else than the all the arrondissements we wanted yes. you to see something special uh, and a we are yeah a neighborhood we both love very much we love it it's in between uh, the fourth and the 12th uh, arrondissement and so we are very central in Paris and uh, yeah and, that's, uh, and probably you guys have never seen this because check what is behind us you have little boats a harbor and a monument dedicated to French revolutions we are also going to show you a hidden uh, walkway mm -hmm. with lots of beautiful flowers because it's the spring and discover the Bastille neighborhood yes that's what we're gonna do so guys you're watching my Paris I'm with Bertrand I'm Marie and we're doing this type of video every other week so you can uh, follow us uh, you can uh, share this video of course and you can like and of course follow us on Instagram on Facebook uh, yeah that would be great and soon we will see you guys coming back to visiting Paris with us for real so today let's go <laughs> yes let's do it Allez. <laughs> so here we are uh, on a passerelle, which is pedestrian, and it's be in between the 4th and the 12th. And we're going to go down to see... Down to the river. <laughs> to see le bassin de l'Arsenal. So we also say le port de l'Arsenal, so this is uh, a place for boats to stay, but people are living there. So that's what we're going to do, we're going to go and, and see the boat. Maybe we can find one... Uh, to live in, why Ooh. not? <laughs> yes, I, I don't have my captain cap, but I guess we can start to sail around. And because it's springtime, you will see, we're gonna discover this neighborhood with a lot of flowers. Okay, up. here we go, down the bridge. I've always wondered, how can you get your boat here? Do you just need to buy a boat and, and rent a spot or you buy it? Or yeah, yeah, you do buy a boat. You can also uh, rent it, but mostly people are buying the boat. But then you have to rent a place. So maybe I will show you Yeah, different type of boats. So we have here boats that are used to really go on to have a, a little uh, fun for the day. So those type of boats here. But the boats uh, I'm more interested in are the péniches. So we're going to see... Ah, les péniches les, de Paris. Voilà, les, les péniches. So it's a, it's a concept that we have in all Europe. Um, let's flat say... Boats, yeah, flat boats. Yeah, flat boats, exactly. In Amsterdam, mostly, they do have them. So we're going to see some that are uh, beautifully made uh, with wood and a lot of uh, yeah, places for the terrace. Usually people buying boats, uh, they want to be more bohemian let's say then uh, freedom then, then yeah more free uh, freedom also. to take your boat and just sail away definitely because there are way more boats here flat boats here than by the the river seine i mean y yes. uh, next to i mean close to notre dame to the louvre there are a few house boats oh that's for a very good reason because here uh as you can see there is uh first there is no waves so la seine La Seine is not a quiet river. You have yes. always big waves passing it's, it's by. It's hard to sleep. <laughs> yes, it's hard to sleep. That's first first thing. But also, you have a lot of traffic. Uh, could be for uh, the tourism, but could be also for. I, I don't know if you guys ever uh, have been here, but you probably saw those massive boats with sand on them. So they are carrying a lot of material uh, through Paris. Here, it's really uh, residential, a harbor, sure, and a harbor. Uh, so people are more quiet and uh, and they 
there is no yeah there's no traffic so they can be really there uh, calm all day and uh, the only boats that are passing by sometimes are the Kanohama which is a type of boats that is more yeah. touristy and it's and it's very rare compared compared to the classic boat cruises so let's yeah let's move on I'm gonna show you more sure so you have to rent uh, a spot uh, to, to, to live here. As you can see, you can access to the electricity, to the water, um, and... Wait, 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 let's, let's, just, let's show that. Just right here, yes. Yeah, if, in case you guys wonder if you can uh, find battery for your, for your uh, phones, <laughs> uh, living on a boat like this. I mean, it's important. We're, we're filming on a, on a phone right now. You do have uh, electricity here so you're connected to the uh, 21st century yes and of course to the water system because you need that um, your boat also needs to be always in capacity of moving that's one rule that is very important is every uh, once a year uh, you have you mean just like the two guys who've passed us <laughs> you, you have to be you have to be mobile to, Exa to, to have a boat exactly uh, but in this case you have to move it one week two weeks three times uh, sometimes three weeks uh, a year and uh, just to prove to the authority of Paris that your boat can sail so but, but you keep your spot you keep your spot the only thing is is not for having rusty boats that are uh, in no use and just like polluting really and so it's really to say this is a living spot and here all here you have about 170 boats 170 yeah. boats. so they are not all um, for living as you can uh, you, you saw some that so there are more are boats than pigeons behind you <laughs> yes probably let's see one two three yes <laughs> <laughs> should we make them fly no 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 <laughs> <laughs> Désolée, madame. Ah, ok, désolé. <laughs> You're such a dog. Merci, madame. <laughs> I, was, I was almost yelled at by uh, a French nanny who said that we should not run after the pigeons because they may fall into the water. Ah. Well, she was also feeding them, which is illegal. So, in a way. <laughs> yes, we, we're even. I don't, feel, I don't feel too guilty. Ok, that's good. But there, there are some amazing boats. Yeah, but those ones, like, um, like it, those ones are, are probably more, yeah, party boats or you do have bars also. So I'm not here, not on Basson l'Arsenal, but on the Seine and on the Canal de Lourc, you have a lot of boats that are used for party. You say Canal de Lourc? Yes. There, there's a, a connection between the Basson l'Arsenal here and the Canal de Lourc? Yes. So if you go that way, you will reach Oop, the Seine River. Let me show. Oh, but you don't see it because it's after the two bridges there. But let's say so that way you have Seine River, um, not far from. Um, so to access the, the harbor here, you sail first on the River Seine. Exactly. And then you. You connect here. You take a turn and then you, you're here. Exactly. And then if you want to continue, you can. You will pass under uh, a tunnel that is under La Bastille and we're going to go there. So you're going to see La Place de la Bastille today. And that's where um, it becomes underground. It, yes, it's an underground tunnel. Then you come up again and you continue through Canal Saint-Martin and Canal de Lourdes. But you're going to see that in another video because we're going to do a video on Canal Saint-Martin. Right. Uh, Keep in mind, guys, that to get to the Canal Saint-Martin, by boat, you have to go through the Bassin de l'Arsenal. Yes, and it's a beautiful place. When the um, restaurants are open, huh. you do have one here that is specialized in uh, oysters and seafood. It's called Le Grand Bleu, mm. and the terrace is just right there, and you and you and you have this view on boats. It's completely surreal uh, in Paris being in an arbor and having seafood. It's just yeah, it's a different experience. So that's why we love this place. It's just completely different. And also you have the, the, the banks where people can go have picnics. Sure, yes. Uh, it's open till 10 p.m. I think, something like that. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's quite great for a, an apéro. Yes, that's the uh, best time. Or, or lunch break if you work in the neighborhood. Yeah, if you want, if you, and, and having a break from Paris, really, because it's, it feels like we are, I don't know, in the south of France or just somewhere else. That's a classic guy. In Paris, we love to say, oh, it feels like we're not in Paris. <laughs> probably, probably you guys at home are thinking, wait a second, I would love to be in Paris right now. Uh, but 
it's a classic Parisian thing is to say, oh, it's wonderful. It's almost as if you were not in Paris anymore. <laughs> because and we say that almost that, all the time. That, because so. that's, that's what we love uh, Paris about, because it's, it's making you traveling. You know, in one city, you have so many different atmospheres. That's exactly. what we love about it. Now, yeah. Where are we you, heading you, to? You can see the column. Oh, yes, maybe not. We see almost only the column. OK, so let's, let's have a look from uh, and Let's closer. go talk about the revolution. Oh, yes. So we just left the Bassin de l'Arsenal and as you can see, now we are on Place de la Bastille. So let's have a look around. But before accessing to this column over there, let's have a look down here. 1789. So is that ring a bell or? <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. Let's let's see uh, in comments, please. It's now the time to see. You know, if you're, you if have you a know, second because yeah. we're gonna say we're gonna say it. What, what is 1789? You good? Let's go. <laughs> 14th of July, 1789 is the storming of the Bastille. Before having the open plaza and the column, and on one side the Opera House, there used to be here a huge, huge fortress with eight massive round towers built in the 1300s to protect or to threat Paris, depending on which uh, uh, side of the cannon you are. And that became in the 1600s a state prison. Many famous people have been imprisoned here. Maybe the most famous one is the philosopher Voltaire or the man in the Iron Mask who really existed. We don't know who he was, but there was a prisoner in an iron mask and this has become the site of revolution so with the one of 1789 known as the french revolution with storming the bastille but there has been more revolution and quite often it happens or start here this year we're celebrating the 150th anniversary of the revolution of la commune de paris mm -hmm. and so on the ground you will see there's another mark that shows 1871 yes. which happened between March and May of 1871 when there was this idea of creating a republic with social values it was crushed in by the French army in the month of May of 1871 so you will read and hear a lot about La Commune de Paris this year but there was another revolution that also started here on the Place de la Bastille in 1830 and that one is celebrated by the column you see up there we call it la colonne de juillet July column so it is not celebrating the French Revolution or the storming of the Bastille instead it is celebrating people who died during the three days of the fight between the people of Paris and the royal army back in 1830. So that's why here I can see the number, so 27, 28, 29 July 1830, down the column. Um, it does look a little bit like the, the same as Colonne Vendôme. I mean, is it, is it copper and bronze? Um, it is bronze is also. It, it's, bronze, it's, right? it's the same idea of uh, being inspired by the Trajan column in Rome or the, the Roman uh, uh, columns that are here to honor soldiers. And you can see written in gold letters, 504 names, which is, um, which are, sorry, the name of the official casualties of the revolution of July 1830. Now we know there were more people, more people have died during these days, but uh, 504 names have been chosen here. The revolution of 1830 is a little bit complicated if you're not uh, too much into French history. Basically, after the fall of Napoleon in 1815, he was replaced by the brother of King Louis XVI, the one who was beheaded during the first French Revolution. This was King Louis XVIII. He died without children, so he was replaced by a third brother known as Charles X. And it is that king who decided in 1813 
to uh, constrain very much the freedom uh, of press, the freedom of opinion, and the people here in Paris, who especially in this neighborhood, a lot of them were working for newspapers that got uh, uh, censored, well then were not very happy with losing their job, with the state of France in general, and so started this new revolution. It's a very complex one, because in only four days, many regimes were uh, envisioned. Some people were pro Bonaparte, so they wanted the son of Napoleon I, who was still living at the time, but in Austria with his mom, to come here and start a new empire. Some people were for a republic, based on the principle of the first French Revolution, with more freedom. And some other people wanted a monarchy, but more in a liberal style, maybe like the English monarchy. And so, basically, uh, there was a lot of... Uh, negotiation being made. The presidency of the French Republic was offered to Lafayette, who uh, is quite a famous character on both sides of the Atlantic. Lafayette refused to become president of the Republic, and instead he was a cousin of Charles X, a guy known as Louis-Philippe d'Orléans, a member of the royal family, but of a cousin branch, who had served during the French Revolution and fought for the French Revolution who was chosen as a compromise between people who were pro-royalty, he was to become a monarch, and people who were pro-more um, democracy, because he signed a chart, the chart of 1830, which guaranteed civil liberties, including freedom of press. And he's the one who decided to have this column erect here. Is it the same that uh, had lived a little while in the Palais Royal? Exactly. He, he was actually descending from the brother of Louis XIV, uh, so we call them the Orléans family, and they were the, uh, the liberal side of the, uh, of the French royal family. Okay. Exactly. Not, not the absolute monarch, more Not the absolute monarch. More modern. He, he, he called himself the citizen king. Oh, So okay. he was, he, if, remember that when he was a, a young man, he decided to fight for the French Revolution took place in, uh, he, he was an officer in major uh, battles, including the Battle of Valmy. So he fought against the ancient regime. Um, then when the French Revolution became more Republican, uh, he was exiled and he traveled a lot, especially to the US, but also to the UK and other European countries. And so he saw different ways uh, of government. But clearly, when the revolution started here, in July of 1830, the revolutionaries, they don't want this guy. They want to have a republic. But there was a compromise decided by the elite, and he was chosen as a balance between different aspects. Okay, great. Now we have to cross, so let's move on. But Bertrand, just crossing the road, I notice on the floor this uh, those little dots? So, what, what is going on here? They, uh, <laughs> all right, let's not die. Okay, perfect. Yeah, these little dots you see on the floor, they are marking the ground to show the, the, uh, uh, the path of the former Bastille fortress. Oh, okay. Because the prison de la Bastille, or the fortress de la Bastille, uh, was demolished right after the storming of the Bastille. Uh, there was an, a man who had a, a building company, he was called Padua, and he hired dozens of unemployed uh, people who, the day of the storming of the Bastille, started to dismantle it stone by stone. I, I remember seeing a stone on Carnavale Museum. Exactly. That was, that was in the shape of Bastille. Exactly. About 100 stones of the, of the biggest stones of the Bastille were actually carved into a miniature version of the Bastille to be sent to all the uh, different counties around France. And so one of them is in the Carnaval Museum, the, which but it, should reopen. But it's like, a, it's, like a, it's like a goodie, it's like a little souvenir. Uh. It is exactly, <laughs> it's merchandising. It's, uh, let's remember that day. Um, and it was undecided. I mean, it, it started like that. Um, and then the guy uh, uh, received the contract to finish the dismantling of the Bastille. 
Wow, okay, so on the floor we can on see all those dots exactly. and, and each of them, as you can see, it's a mini dactyl. Yeah, even though it, I don't want to be too uh, boring, but you see three towers, well, the Bastille had eight towers. So eight four, towers. Four on each side. And so, and so, if I, so if I remember well, so the Bastille we just been in was attached, it was kind of the moat uh, to protect exactly. Paris. So it was part of the fortress of Charles V, the one who built uh, La Bastille. And so now it's, uh, it's in harbor and people are living there peacefully, but for a long time it was really there to defend uh, Paris against the enemies. And you had, that's why it's called l'arsenal, because in French, that means the defense, uh, defense area. So that the place where you have the weapons, the powder, uh, the powder and uh, yeah, and the cannons. So that's why it's called l'arsenal. But from here, you can see it's a, it's a very busy um, place. Uh, La Place de la Bastille is known for that, for the traffic. We're gonna go around and to see the Opéra Bastille because last time we saw the Opéra Garnier, now we're gonna see the Opéra Bastille. So just spinning around the Place Bastille, we can see well the statue, the golden statue. So what is this? Is it, is it, is it an angel or? More than an angel, it is the genius of the Bastille, the genie de la Bastille. He, he represents, so he, he's a young winged man who in the left hand is holding broken chain. Can, 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 you, can you mime it, please? Can you do the Jenny de la Bastille? <laughs> Super. So on the left hand is, is holding broken chains to show, to symbolize freedom. And in the other hand, the torch of freedom, like Lady Liberty uh, in the US. Ah. And he's showing this in a moving forward way. There is the, uh, the, the, not the draft, the, let's say the study of it in the, in the Louvre. In ah, the Louvre. okay. But it's, it's weird because it's uh, also um, looking the other way and not looking towards the Opéra Bastille. Um, because that was built, of course, way That's after, true. much later on. Um, so the big building you can see, the modern one, on the right. This is the new opera. This is where we're having the shows, the proper opera show. Because in Opéra Garnier, it's mostly ballet, because it's a beautiful place, but the acoustic is not that great compared to this new one here. And with Bertrand, we've been in Opéra just before COVID happened. And that was last year uh, to yeah just to to enjoy a beautiful show and uh, it is it is not the same as Opéra Garnier. Do you remember what show it was? Yeah, well, it was actually a ballet. So, <laughs> but yeah, you do have opera and ballet. Yeah, it was uh, three different um, uh, choreographers uh, proposing three different thematics, and that was quite interesting. And and at, at the time. If I remember well, um, some of the people working for the opera were on strike. Yes. So yeah, you can see that the big screen is not, it's not advertising. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's only to show uh, what is uh, normally in opera, uh, opera Basti. But, uh, but yeah, it's just... Uh, oh, they did, um, during the confinement, during the first lockdown, some of the dancers, they, they did uh, virtual uh, shows in their home, which I find very nice of them. So they want, you know, the ballet to continue and, and people to still be interested in the opera. They're but a ballet class by one of the star dancers of the opera that is available on the City of Paris website. Ah, okay. So we can, uh, so we can train. We can be ballerinas. Okay, that's that's great. So yes, yeah, so you can see the the, the the building is very modern. That is from 1989. So I was four years old. Now I'm revealing my age. Um, when that was built, and uh, before that, uh, so during 20 years, you had nothing there. Before that, you had a train station here. So it was a train uh, station. A train station. There seems to be a train station uh, before anything else, like the uh, Musée d'Orsay was a train station. The Musée d'Orsay was a train station. Uh, yeah, usually when you tear down a train station, you transform it into a cultural, you know, space. So this is the case here. You had a train station. We still have um, the in a way the rails so we're going to visit that we're going to go where before people could go and they were going to Vincennes and they were going so 
Here it's the beginning of the 12th arrondissement. You can see on the map of Paris, um, this is really at the east of Paris and that's going all the way to Vincennes. Vincennes with a beautiful chateau. Maybe we're going to do a video on Vincennes at one point. I really yeah, like this place. Outside of Paris too. We and have so, 10 kilometers of freedom. Yes. <laughs> so to go there uh, at the time, you had to take this. Uh, so to this train station, you were in a very tiny trains. Like you have to imagine um, it's, it's, it's more what we call now TER, huh? so those regional trains, yeah, they were like very three, tiny. Three wagons, three cars. Exactly, and so they were doing, it's more a shuttle really, and they were going to Vincennes and, and back a bit further at one point. But this was not um, in use very long, uh, because uh, but with the other train station, we have another one that is Gare de Lyon, that is massive, Gare de Bercy. So all those train stations in the same neighborhood at one point, uh, we had to uh, select only a few. And so this one uh, was uh, taken down. So we're going to see, it's just, it's, that's now kind of a hidden gem. OK, so not a lot of people know about La Coule Verte. It's, um, it's the tracks so, yeah, the old on the tracks of the old train station. So we have to go behind the Opéra Bastille and find the entrance of uh, this uh, this path that is called La Coulée Verte. You will see it's uh, it's very unusual. The Viaduc is uh, like an aqueduct, but for uh, for people, for, for pedestrian, people, yes, for people, for people to go. Yes. So for a long time, um, like I say, this was uh, here. You have to imagine you had the rails and the tracks of the train so here from so it was going from there it's been cut it's been cut all this part is missing but here you have the end of the opera bastille that's the white the building we see there, this the end of the opera bastille. exactly with the administrative building and all and here not the previous, sign, huh? not the previous <laughs> and from there to there so it's cut now we're going to go up here but you will see that those tracks were not so on the floor they were upper like most of um, our I don't know, our, our walls in Paris, we conserve them because they are beautiful. In this case, you see it's made of brick and these go very far. Yeah, we're going to see some more, uh, but I want you guys to see also up. So we're going to see up and down Le Viaduc. Voilà, en fait c'est ça que je voulais voir, c'était l'Opéra Bastille, mais de là, tu vois. Ok. So look at this place, I just love it. Look at that. So we are in, we are in the middle of Paris and beam, we are getting into this garden that looks like heaven. So, so this is La Coulée Verte. La Coulée Verte. So the Viaduc des Arts, um, it's more what is going on down our feet. So you have arcades made of bricks, as you could see, and each of them is one shop for one artisan or one brand. So that's really the Viaduc des Arts. All the art, let's say, is down there. But here, on up, on the upper level, as you can see, it, <laughs> it's something completely different. Um, it's just a long garden with nothing uh, from here to the end nothing will stop us uh, to walk it's until just a, yeah until then it's, it's a very long walk uh, and a very pleasant one not very known not very touristy no, it, not even the Parisians are not coming here and it's just marvelous look at that it is spring which means freedom will, will soon come back <laughs> no, it doesn't mean that I see you getting you getting poetic. You don't need to you don't need to go all the way to Japan. You, you have a, a bit of a Parisian cherry blossom. And so Marie, you you're saying so the tracks? So the tracks are going this way? Yes, exactly. So the tracks were all all the way here. And um <laughs> We're going to see the Gare de Lyon, so the other train station on the way, um, just to relate to the tracks. But what is interesting about this place is when you look around, people that are living on the five, fifth or sixth floor, for example, they can enjoy this view 
not on the street but on the garden so this became also the the place to invest let's say if you are interested in a in a yeah you're just in an apartment in paris you will not take the third or fourth floor here because it's too low you need to be a little bit more upper to enjoy the view so when you live in the apartments up there on the boulevard you don't need to take care of your own uh, plantation at your window you have the coulevert you have the coulevert more yes yeah all this neighborhood was changed because of the opera uh, so uh, we're talking about the 80s so you will see that la coule verte is mostly more modern buildings but some are also the ancient factories because we are also in a neighborhood where you have a lot of artisans um, Le Faubourg Saint-Antoine. Saint so it's known for that. Alors Saint-Antoine, uh, it's also the name of an hospital that is very known and very old in Paris. So this is also in this neighborhood. Um, so you have the hospital, you have the parish Saint-Antoine, and uh, you also have one of the biggest food markets here. And we're going to see that later. Wonderful. So here we see that Bastille, uh, we, just, uh, we just went to the Opéra Bastille, it's only uh, 500 meters. And if you want to go all the way to Bois de Vincennes, so this is the second largest uh, wood of Paris because we have also the one of Boulogne. So this one, Vincennes, is only at 4.2 kilometers. So uh, this old coulée verte is uh, a max of five kilometers long, which is great because if you want to run or you can also come here with roller, I think, but uh, yeah, but I'm not sure if the bicycles are allowed. Here you can see a church and... I love this church, Marie. You do? Yeah, I used Tell to me more about it, because... I, I used to live in a small street next to it, uh, a street called Saint Aclos, Saint Nicholas. And this church here is very odd because the, when you look at the spire and the bell tower, it is so much bigger than the rest of the body of the church. And it looks also that people who live on the fifth floor from their balcony... They, they can, can go in the church. They can go in the church. And this is because the church was actually built after the two buildings. Oh, it's even not, even, it's, even it's the not, tower? Yes, it's, okay. not, it's not an old church at all. Uh, it's a church built in the late uh, 1800s, early 19. It's called Saint Antoine des 15 Saint Anthony of the 1520, which means 300, 15 times 20. It's the name of an old hospital all the way. Today, it's the one that is specialized for the eyes. Mm, okay. Um, and so it's a very old hospital that had 300 beds, but back then they were not necessarily counted by hundreds, but by twenties. So that's mm -hmm. why it's called 1520, which literally means 300. That's funny. And, and so this church here, yes, it's a very small church, but with a massive bell tower built in between these two buildings, so with a big uh, constraint. That's fascinating how the architecture is very different here because uh, we saw some modern buildings, we see this church uh, there, we see bricks, we see Osmanian building on the other side. It's quite confusing, but also very interesting. I'm, I'm sure if you are into architecture, yeah, you should definitely come back here because look at that, for example, uh, we do have something here that doesn't look at all Parisian with these bricks. It does look more coming from England or Holland. Where are you Bertrand? Are you enjoying the flowers? Yes, I'm taking photos. <laughs> Behind the scenes. Okay, wow. This is really just the best season to come here. I do remember a movie um, which is taking place here. I don't know if you saw the movie um, called Before Sunset, Before Sunrise. Is that? <laughs> no, you don't know this. No, okay. So it's a it's a movie that is um, it's great. I mean, I love it, and it's happening in Paris. Uh, so it's Before Sunset, and they are talking here. It's like us. They are just talking here in the Coulée Verte. We just passed some bamboo. We're in the jungle. We are in the jungle of bamboos. And now I think it's time for us to get down to see what is under our feet, Bertrand. I 
I hope there's food. <laughs> Let's do it. So we just down the bamboo. I don't know if you can see the ba the bamboos right uh, just uh, just here. So we went down. Yeah, we're back on the. We are back. Back on the road. Back on the first floor. Oh. <laughs> and here. No flowers, but bicycles. Yes, here you can see the arcades very well, and we can see some different shops. So here it's for bicycle, and uh, it's true that Paris changed a lot this uh, last year. With the COVID, it was one good thing, positive thing that uh, came after. People are using much more bikes than before. And different type of shop the here. They have a nickname, they're called the Corona Piste. Oh, Corona <laughs> no, that's sad. And here you can see a boutique with different uh, type of items coming from different countries. It's a des it, 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 they call themselves designers, uh, ethic designers. So that's the type of boutique you have here. But if you continue, you see the arcades are continuing on the other side. So if you continue, you can probably see uh, furniture stores and uh, yeah, any type of stores really. Pardon. <laughs> We're going to go down here. Just up here with the viaduc and continuing here. And as you can see, not just bikes, individual bikes, but also the Vélib uh, are also... Which is finally working. Maybe some of you uh, came to Paris two, three years ago. They, there was a change in the, in the company you were running the, the Vélib. Now it's working, so you guys can come back and, uh, and cycle the city. And if you are a bit lazy like I am, you can take the blue ones. Oh no, Marie. The blue ones are electric bikes, the green ones are classical ones but with the blue you're getting much uh, quicker and are faster you, are in you revealing the secret of why you go so fast on a bike it's because it has an electric of uh, course i can go up to i don't know 25 kilometers an hour which is which is very fast and great in paris but now we're getting closer to a very great place i love in this neighborhood that is the food market so ah, let's have a look i knew there was food coming <laughs> So Bertrand, here we are approaching the Marché Aligre. Marché Aligre is a massive market. It's on a long street here, but also there is a covered part. Um, it's kind of like if, imagine a little market just extended and extended and extended. And now it's massive. So a lot of vegetables, a lot of fruits uh, around here. I'm going to keep my mask because there is a lot of people um, in this market. It's very popular. It's every day, um, just Mondays. It's the day in Paris where everyone is having a little uh, <laughs> rest, okay. let's say. So exactly. So Monday, you don't have markets in Paris. A lot of boutiques also are closed on Mondays. Um, but here, every other day of the week, it's open and uh, until 1, 2 p.m. And uh, yeah, you can come every morning. It's really great. And you have the best prices uh, in all Paris. So Place d'Aligre. So this is why we call this market Marché d'Aligre. But here you also have Marché Beauvau. So it's a bit confusing, you will see. Let's come inside and you will discover the covered market. So the ancient one. And here it's more food style. So you can get food already made, uh, for example, in the butcher. Or here you have pies and beautiful pastries. Uh, as you can see, so it's a bit different than the outside where it's only products uh, to take away and to cook at home. Here uh, you have both. But yeah, let's uh, continue a bit further. You will see it's just amazing. Can you smell truffle, Bertrand? I can smell cheese, I can smell oh, truffle. It's beautiful. So look at the, struc the structure of the market. So in the middle, you have this uh, ancient fountain. So it, it looks like we are in the street, but with a wooden roof. And you can see the roof uh, just above our head. So this is the traditional market made of wood. We change all of them uh, for being more metallic ones, especially at the beginning of the 20th century. But this is kind of the old fashioned. I like it. Mmm, oysters. Yeah. So we just exit the cover market and you can see uh, the uh, outside market continues 
here we have Bertrand looking at the flowers. <laughs> But what is interesting in this market is not just about food. If we go just a bit on the side, you will see there is another market, more like a flea, uh, flea market, les puces. There you have what we call also in French la brocante, where they sell objects. Uh, so you have also uh, clothes and, and jewelry, but they also sell books and a bit of everything for quite cheap price. And that's also every day. So if you're looking to make some good business, you can come here. You see you have old books, for example. They are beautiful. I, I might take a moment after this video to look around. And I'm gonna go I'm gonna buy two plates, two forks, two knives, so we can have a picnic night. <laughs> I'm hungry after visiting. I love the idea. <laughs> So yeah, if you're looking for uh, having this atmosphere of brocante, uh, flea markets, you don't have to go all the way to Port de Clignancourt. You can come here, Marché à Ligre, very close to Opéra Bassi. And as you can see, it's very popular. A lot of people uh, are here in this market. You can see the clock behind Bertrand is Marché Beauvau, so the covered market. And there is one place, Bertrand, I really love. I see it here. It's au merveilleux. Let me. Yes. Uh, so it's a it's a brand. You might know it if you ever came in a tour with me. Um, it's one of my favorite pastry in Paris. But it's coming from Lille. Actually, it's a, it's a northern northern pastry called merveilleux, the marvelous cakes. And let me show you what I'm talking about. So this is called, you see, Merveilleux here, Merveilleux de Fred, and you can see someone is making them right now. So those are little meringue, so made of white egg, and they are rolling them with a bit of cream, they are rolling them after in crispy caramel or white chocolate, and that is ending like that. Uh, Bertrand, this is smelling amazing. I think it is heaven we need the... to go inside here. Yes. So I will do that. Oh <laughs> <laughs> okay. So that was it for today. It was a good day. It was a good again. day. It's still very sunny, and now we have beautiful cake from Le Merveilleux. Uh, so we're gonna have a little bit of lunch, I think. Is that okay for you, Bertrand? It is that is a good idea? It's always okay for me. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you guys for watching this video, and see you very soon for another episode of My Pride Paris in Paris. <laughs> yes. Bye, bye, guys. Enjoy see the spring. See you guys. Thank you so much. Bye.